Hey guys, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Chelsea Adler and I am an actuary currently working for an insure tech company called Root Insurance. And about a year ago, I launched a blog to help and inspire uh, future actuaries and also just to raise awareness about the profession and hopefully kind of change people's perception of insurance in general. And over the last year, one of the greatest blessings in this journey has been getting con to connect with people literally all over the world and hearing their stories and just the unique um, triumphs and challenges that we all go through. And it's in these conversations that quite a few people have asked me, you know, what was the inspiration for starting your blog and now this YouTube channel? And um, it was actually just yesterday that somebody said, hey, like, why don't you make a YouTube video about, you know, your story and why you started the vlog? So here we are. <laughs> I do think it's important to share kind of where my heart is behind what I'm doing and where my inspiration comes from. So here we go. So starting at the very beginning, I first heard about the actual profession when I was a sophomore in high school, which I now know is pretty early compared to some people. Um, a lot of folks don't hear about the profession until they're in college or even after they've graduated. And so um, do feel super grateful that I heard about it very early on in my life. And so um, it was in a statistics class that I had the most amazing teacher who just made the numbers and what we were learning come to life. and. It really drew me in and I am definitely a self-proclaimed nerd um, like biggest nerd you can imagine I like loved statistics so much that I read every single word of this textbook I asked my mom to buy me the textbook like who does that and because I read this textbook so thoroughly it was in just like a tiny little footnote that it said something to the effect of, you know, if you like statistics, you should consider a career as an actuary. And so that was the first time I heard about the profession and that kind of stuck with me. And so then later, um, my senior year of high school, my parents were really pushing me to decide what I wanted to study so, so that that could also help me figure out where I wanted to go to school. And um, this idea of being an actuary came back up. And so to get more information about it, I did some research and my dad, who's a State Farm agent, actually took me over to State Farm's headquarters in Bloomington, Illinois, and I had the opportunity to job shadow an actuary for, for the day. And it truthfully was after that one job shadow that I was just sold. <laughs> I was like, yep, this is the job for me. Like, I, I know this is something that I'm passionate about and I think I can be really good at and I am all in. <laughs> and so, um, I, I, again, looking back, I realize that is not everyone's story. And, um, you know, there are plenty of people who still don't know what they want to do with their lives and with their career. And, you know, while I do think that, um, the Lord has blessed me with gifts and um, talents to be good as an actuary and given me opportunities to excel. Um, you know, I also am just open to the opportunity that this may not be what I do forever. You know, this is what I'm doing right now. This is what I feel a lot of joy and passion in, um, but it doesn't limit me to staying in this profession. And I think that's one of the coolest things that, um, you know, you'll hear me talk about later and maybe in some of my other um, videos is just that I think becoming an actuary it really opens opens a lot of doors um, so sure you can have a really great successful and rewarding career as an actuary until you retire but the skills you learn becoming an actuary can also position you for success in pretty much any realm or industry or role um, so I just think that is one of the most amazing aspects of the profession so anyway, I, um, for those of you who haven't read my blog or um, some of the articles I've written, I, you know, another big piece of my story is the fact that I was a synchronized swimmer for 15 years. And 
Um, my dream for so many years was to go to Stanford. Um, they were one of the top synchronized swimming universities in the country and of course are an amazing academic um, institution. And so, I mean, I was just dead set, like that's where I was gonna go to college. Um, and everything in my life revolved around doing whatever I could to get in um, up until my junior year when I applied. And I was so blessed and fortunate to actually get in. And then at that point in time, I had the opportunity to go on a recruit trip to see the campus, meet the team. And, um, you know, if you don't know the end of the story, I ended up choosing not to go to Stanford and actually went to Ohio State instead. And that was a pretty big surprise to a lot of people, um, including my family and close friends and, and probably a pretty big disappointment too. It's like, you know, who gets into Stanford and then says no, right? From the outside looking in, it probably didn't seem like that decision made a lot of sense. Um, but essentially what happened was I got to campus and, um, you know, for those who don't know me super well, my faith is the most important thing in my life. And um, I was really just trying to be very prayerful and intentional about, you know, this very important next step of my life. And so I had prayed a lot about it. Um, obviously, this was something I thought I wanted, but really wanted to make sure that that was also the Lord's will for me. And so when I got on campus, it was just like, you know, when you have a feeling in the pit of your stomach that something just isn't quite right, um, that's, that's how it felt. Um, you know, I really just didn't feel at peace with... Um, the idea of going to Stanford and so I decided to consider other options and because I had already decided at that point in time that I wanted to pursue this actuarial um, profession I was also kind of looking into what school is going to best support me in that pursuit and at the time um, and maybe even still Stanford didn't really have an actual science program. Um, they had really very, very broad majors. Um, so I could major in math or something like that, but there was really nothing specifically that was gonna cater to the actual profession at that time. And Ohio State had that. And I also just felt so much peace with you know, the people that I met there and that that was the right choice for me. So I went to Ohio State and um, swam all four years that I was there. I studied actuarial science, took a few exams, was fortunate to get a couple internships, and then accepted my first full-time position at State Farm. And I worked in their homeowner's pricing unit for the first five years of my career. Had truthfully the most you know, amazing experience, and then transitioned to Root um, in October of 2019, so about two years ago. That's really when everything changed for me. Um, and it was actually on a bus <laughs> in Hawaii um, at my fellowship conferment um, conference that I first had this idea for Inspiring Actuaries. And at the time, I had no idea what it really looked like. I just knew I had this burning desire to want to help others and to um, just give back. I mean, I look on my journey and I, don't get me wrong, I worked really, really hard to get where I am, but I also know that I've been really blessed to have had a ton of support and a lot of opportunities that just not everybody has. And so as I'm sitting on this bus, I, I was just kind of reflecting on the fact that you know, there's so many people out there who could be amazing actuaries and find so much joy and fulfillment in this career and they've never heard of it or just don't have the means to pursue it. And so, like I said, I just felt this longing and this calling to want to give back and to want to just help and support others because I was so grateful for the love and support that I had received. But again, just didn't know what this would look like or how to even begin. 
Um, it was just, you know, an, an initial thought at that point. And so, you know, getting back to, um, you know, work at the end of 2019, um, you know, I'm just finally done with actuarial exams for the first time. And uh, shortly after that, in March of 2020, was when uh, COVID-19 hit. And I think that this time period was probably extremely impactful and formative for a lot of people. And it certainly was for me, but I think it was compounded by the fact that, you know, for the first time in my life, really, I didn't have a specific tangible goal that I was working towards, you know, so much of your life is, you know, in high school, you're working so hard to get good grades so that you can get into a good college. And in college, you're working so hard to get good grades and get internships so that you can get a good job. And I, you know, finished these exams, which were a very clear way to progress in my career. And you almost get to this place where you're, you're just like, well, what do I do now? And as I've talked to you know more actuaries about this experience, I'm realizing that this is a very common um, experience for a lot of people in, in what I would almost call like a midlife crisis of just like, oh, like what do I want to make of my career now? And, and even in bigger for me was more like, what do I want my life to be about? So I, you know, Finally, I'm at this place where I'm sort of wrestling with like, what do I do with my career? What do I do with my life? Um, now that I don't have these like tangible specific goals that I'm working towards. And then of course, the whole world shuts down and we all have more time than ever to be in our thoughts and be reflective. And so this was a really, really hard season for me. Um, to be honest, I struggled so much with anxiety and depression and um, you know I still think I wrestle with a lot of those things um, and I'm super grateful to have had um, support and the ability to talk to somebody about some of the struggles that I was going through um, that was so so helpful for me to, to just process everything that I was go that was going on in my mind um, but it took about a year for me to um, start having more of an idea of what this could look like and I was honestly terrified and I'm still very uncomfortable a lot of times posting things on social media because I am a very private person and I also am a perfectionist and I'm terrified of being you know criticized or or having you know just any criticism is it's scary and and the social media world can sometimes be negative or just really unkind and so um there were so many reasons why i almost didn't do this um actually the first time i tried recording myself i just almost gave up then and there because it was so awkward and i just didn't think i could do it um but yeah it was towards the end of 2020 that i started to get a clearer picture of what this could look like and um i i just remember um it was New Year's Eve. I was running on the treadmill and just all these thoughts running through my mind. And I had just officially committed to launching this blog and I had given it up to God and just said, okay, Lord, like I, I feel you leading me into this um, and I want you to just be glorified in it and for for this to just be for for you um and, and not for my own pursuit and so yeah ultimately like what i am hoping for in launching this blog and you know i'd be lying if i said i knew what i you know want to do long term because i just think so much of the excitement is in the not knowing and just trusting that god is doing something so much bigger than myself and he he's going to continue to surprise me which i am i'm just excited to see what he does because he's always working even when and especially when we can't see it and so i am just so stoked to see where this goes but ultimately at the heart of it you know my greatest desire is to make his love known through leveraging 
this platform I've been given and this profession that I'm so grateful to love and feel so much purpose in. And so, you know, on the one hand, I, I want to spread awareness of the actuarial profession because I truly do think there's so many people out there who could be amazing actuaries and they've just never heard of this amazingly cool and rewarding career. And, and then I want to just help equip people to pursue it, um, whether that's financially or just giving advice and, and sharing tips that I've learned along the way. Like, I just want to help people because I'm so grateful for all the support that I've received along the way. I am so excited to see what the Lord has in store. Um, and I have always um, just been praying that God would use this in ways so much bigger than myself so that it's clear that, you know, whatever happens, it's not me, but it's his power at work. You know, at the end of the day, I just get so much joy out of creating this content, knowing that it's going to help people and hopefully inspire and encourage them in whatever they're pursuing in their life and in their journey. Um, and, and yeah, getting to have conversations with people about, you know, why I do the things that I do and how my faith in Jesus just drives everything. Thank you for watching. Thank you for, um, engaging with me and reaching out, asking questions. Um, thank you to all of those who have reached out to want to help. And I'm just so excited to connect with more of you and just, appreciate, um, again, all the support I've been given, all the, the positive encouragement I've received with the blog, um, because it, it certainly does get hard at times to keep going, and it is a lot of work, but it's something that I really think is important and I care about, and so I'm so happy to do it, just knowing that it's gonna help even just one person. Um, so yeah, I'm really grateful for this journey. Um, it has immensely blessed me up to this point and I hope it continues to bless others and just um, thanks everybody for watching and for uh, supporting Inspiring Actuaries. We'll see what happens next.